Time for Screen Junkies Movie Fights. Today's episode of Movie Fights is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain website or online store, make it with Squarespace. What's going on, everybody? Movie fights, it's all happening right now. You know, if the internet is good for one thing, it is finding controversy. It is a swirling storm of what, how did that happen? In fact, that happened right here on this set during the Women in Film event. Beautiful event, raised lots of money, really great cause, but some shit went down. <laughs> Let's go back and take a look oh, no. at oh. this moment that will live cool. in infamy. Wow! Hey, we have a three-way We didn't play. Do we have a tiebreaker? Do we have a tiebreaker? <laughs> Billy, what do we do? Billy, <laughs> Billy is there a tiebreaker? You decide how. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go with the guy I picked initially. <laughs> Joe Stein. Oh, you snuck it out, Joe. Oh, three smart guys, three dumb movies. Congratulations, Joe. Whoa. It was <laughs> a once in a lifetime. <laughs> wow. Whoa. <laughs> nice effects. JTE, shout out to the fader. JTE, whoa. whoa! <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so, like. so we had a once-in-a-lifetime matchup of the three men who were uh, making our honest trailers, writing, creating them. And uh, it ended in controversy because we didn't have a good tiebreaker. Uh, they were tied 1-1-1, one, 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 and it, it came back to me to decide it. And I had already voted for Joe Starr, so I just said, yeah, I guess I gotta go with Joe again. So I am gonna just put it out there. Yeah. It's a little weird that a controversy is just me winning something. <laughs> There. <laughs> well, Dan called foul on that, and it, you know, and we're to, still friends. To be certain, we, we, we did not have a good contingency plan for a tie. Joe and a shocker. <laughs> yes. So today, we are super excited. Not once in a lifetime, twice in a lifetime, we have these three today gentlemen. Oh, right here, he's the head writer, screen jockeys, you know, from Honest Trailers and all over the place, SJU, Spencer Gilbert. Just here to have fun, Hal. This is, whose lines is it anyway? The points don't matter. There you go, there you go. Thank you for always having a good time. Oh, um, man, he is the man with the best hair at Screen Junkies, the delightful, super hilarious Joe Starr. See, I disagree, because Spencer got a haircut like like a week or a week <laughs> or two ago, and it's just a good haircut. But you've got product, dude. you got like products that we don't even know about. But I need product. You don't, you just roll out of bed that way. It's all natural, baby. I mean, that volume, no one's gonna <laughs> beat that volume, brother. I gotta have something in this fight. And uh, he is the man, the myth, the legend, the king of uh, box office numbers, Mr. Dan Merle. Dan, you're not checking facts today. You came here to kick some ass, right? Here we go again. <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, was that Bruce Willis? Uh, no, that's Tropic Thunder. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Man. Sports are six, I believe, or five. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> Here we go again, again, again. Uh, excellent. Very excited to have you three doing battle in this half circle. And over on the fact checked, we got Mr. Lon Harris, Mr. That's At me. Lons. Woo -woo. At Lons, that's me. Hello, everybody. Uh, Lon, you're wearing an owl shirt. I am. I'm wearing an owl pin. Yeah, this is it's a Twin Peaks uh, shirt. The owls are not what they seem. Right on. Everything's coming up owls today. It's a very <laughs> owl-heavy show. Well, like, I would say a top ten bird. Yeah, I mean, just throwing it out there. I would say a top five bird of prey. Wow. Yeah. Bold. This I'll go uh, there. buddy cop movie thing that's going on. <laughs> One's a derelict making... ornithologist. Yeah. <laughs> when like when birds go them. missing, <laughs> you call bird cops. Yeah. You're like, making me so paranoid about birds now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, it's so and uh, sitting next to Lon. Oh, it's always great to have. She is paranoid about birds. Danielle <laughs> Radford. <laughs> Danielle hashtag paranoid about birds. Radford. Hey. So um, for those of you just tuning in, a lot of you know how this works. I am y'all. I am the voice of the people. And so in the case of a tie between the judges, I will come in and I will read the uh, YouTube poll. There are some really fun polls on, on Twitter. Please join those, join the conversation on Twitter. But the poll that counts is the one on YouTube. It will not go up until every fighter has made their initial argument. We want this to be about the, the arguments and not necessarily about which movie y'all like more. <laughs> um, if you're confused about how the voting works, go down in the description box. And if you want to join in, send me really fun things because I'm also on Twitter. I'm reading things that stand out to me. Send her those really dank funny. memes. Then dank memes. Do that in the hashtag. Hashtag movie fights live. That is where I will be. I will be checking them. Um, and if I don't have time to necessarily shout out everyone, I do try to like, like and fave and, and comment as much as I can. So Corgis. 
And as many cork butts as you can give me. Yeah. <laughs> and use the hashtag so everybody can see the corgis. Yeah, give everyone the corgis. Corgis aren't just for me. Corgis are for everyone. <laughs> corgis are for everyone. Indeed. Uh, Spencer, I was surprised that you didn't mock me for saying dank memes again, because I was getting ready to mock you for wearing a, a shirt representing a place that sells hard copy media. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot to have. Wow. And loaded. Biased, rigged, rigged judging, biased. I quit. <laughs> Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, I like your music. Thanks, I'll, Al. Yes. I'll never yeah. mock anything that London Calling says over there, man. That's a good duo. Nice. That's a real good duo. Man, London Calling. I see what you did. London Calling. You know what? Uh, before we uh, kick off this battle, let me. Uh, I'll break it down real quick. Again, uh, we have three fighters. Uh, there are seven questions. First one to four points wins. There are three regular round questions, and then we go to the speed round. So if someone's down 3-0 going into the speed round, you know, someone can still come back. So, uh, don't get comfortable. And before <laughs> we uh, kick off the match, Juan has a message for us. Yeah, before we get into our first round, we do want to thank and shout out our friends at Squarespace for sponsoring today's show. If you didn't know already, Squarespace makes it so easy to create your online identity. And that's whether it's your side gig, it's your main hustle, whatever you want to get yourself out there, you want to be on the net, it's never been easier to sell products and services online. And Squarespace is an all-in-one platform, 24-hour customer service. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. It's super easy easy to use. Uh, so you just want to make sure you go to squarespace.com. You can get your free trial. Go to squarespace.com slash movie fights. That's the secret code. Oh. Get a free trial uh, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Lot had copy. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did I go Lot fast? Did I go too fast? Out, that was a good one. That was nice. You're talking as fast as I do. Listen. Sell me this pen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great pen. It works really well. <laughs> um, yeah, so Juan, you and I could team up and get a Squarespace, Squarespace site dedicated to our fandom of owls. Our, our shared <laughs> bird fandom. If you go to, if you go to birdjunkies.com right now, I don't know what's actually there. Don't actually don't go, go there. That's don't don't go there. <laughs> yeah. But you could, theoretically. Someone likes birds in a very bad way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not that birds. much. That's too intense. All right, Juan, thank you for those words. JTE, oh, drop that package. <laughs> Die. Ladies and gentlemen, no. it's main event time. Yes! JT, a better package than any Apple product. Um, <laughs> question. So well designed. Yes. <laughs> Number one, let's go to our first question. What character, woo, what character would you want as your attorney? If you could have any movie character, what character would you want as your attorney? What a question. If you're Why do we ask this Why are we at, Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. 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 Maybe the greatest role in cinema history yet again. Good movie. Good stuff. So, Spencer? Well, we'll start with you. I, uh, uh, she was actually a, a good choice and a front runner for me, but I think there's only one lawyer in uh, film, film history or actual history who could out <laughs> <laughs> argue her, and that's Abraham Lincoln from the movie Lincoln. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to reach into the greatest lawyers of all time to, to make my pick, but I can choose anyone. They made a great film about him. It showed off all of his lawyerly skills, and I'm assuming this is a defense attorney because it's my attorney. I'm not hiring someone to sue somebody else. That's why I picked Lincoln. He could uh, pass a constitutional amendment. He could get me off the hook. All right, Spencer going with an all-time classic, Abraham Lincoln. Joe. There's more to law than just knowledge or a degree in law. <laughs> There's also heart and a willingness to put in the work. And that's why I'm choosing Tommy Callahan III from Tommy Boy. <laughs> this is a guy who will never stop He'll never let you down. Uh, yeah, the trial might start a little rough, but he's going to get it together. He's a man of the people. He's going to turn things around in the most endearing way possible and win that trial, not for money or for historical fame like Lincoln, but for you, because he cares about people. Wow, Lincoln Tommy Boy. Lincoln shade. <laughs> yeah. That selfish Lincoln always out for himself. Oh, Lincoln! Greatest narcissist in American history, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Arguable. Penny, look at me. Yeah, and you, we all know Lincoln did it for the likes. Um, Dan. I think you want somebody as your attorney that's got experience. You want somebody that's got 
a touch of class. You want somebody that the jury's gonna like. And that's why I'm going with the Matlock of this galaxy and a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi. Matlock of the galaxy. Not that one, though. Alec Guinness is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh-oh. <laughs> Billy specified which one it was, and it's still not the... JT is a prequel it's, purist. It's, it's, it's Alec Guinness Obi-Wan... Why would you pull that one for Obi-Wan Kenobi? Oh, whatever. doesn't matter. Anyway, Alec Guinness is Obi-Wan Kenobi is my attorney. I think that he has what it takes to, do, to get the job done. I think he has the experience that it takes, and I look forward to defending his honor to your honors here mm, uh. and your honors at home, if it please the court. Okay, once again, we have Abraham Lincoln, Tommy Callahan the third from Tommy Boy and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Fight it out, fellas. I trust Obi-Wan as a judge. And you know why? It's because he sees that there's two sides to everything. He's the master of seeing the lightness and the dark. He's too wishy-washy to actually make a convicted defense on behalf of someone or, or convince himself to be part of the prosecution. He's too afraid of commitment, too afraid of throwing mm. himself into the fight. He always wants to just stand back and kind of judge from a distance. That's not what you want in a lawyer. I'm, I'm concerned about trusting a guy that's lived in a cave in the desert for the past 20 years. Like, where is his headspace at as he enters the courtroom with you? You're right, you want to trust a guy who strapped road flares to yeah. his chest and threatened to blow up the building. I want to trust the guy that took seven years to get through undergraduate and uh, celebrated by doing bong reps and look, passing out at his friends' He did friend's seven living years room. of college. That's four years undergrad, three years law school. That's his base. What happened, Joe? Fact is, seven years of undergraduate. <laughs> yeah, they're called doctors. I remember that snarky David Spade line, Joe. You can't get that one past me. I think something big uh, about being an attorney is being able to sell. It's about that opening argument. It's about that closing argument. And Tommy can sell. Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and market guaranteed I will or you buy a quality product from me that's his first sell it's great there's but no trade the heart his dad's line that is not Tommy Callahan's mm. line that was his father's line but it's taking botched. it's taking him what he learned from his father and really getting it into gear like I said I didn't say this trial is gonna be perfect from the get-go but this is a guy <laughs> that will not stop right. I'm going to end the trial you. by bailing my own lawyer out of jail yeah. to have him continue. I don't he's got a drinking problem. He's got a drinking convicted. Convicted. problem. He's got an anger problem. He goes with his gut. And yes, that can be that can be good for okay, passion let's for talk making about, your closing let's talk arguments. about angry, anger issues. Lincoln, a bare knuckle <laughs> brawler. Do I want that? <laughs> that, that was college entered athletics. Politics. Entered politics. It was wrestling. <laughs> it was a sanctioned bout. Entered politics to uh, solve what he called his own personal national debt. In it for the money. Tommy Callahan what? In it for the people. It's on yeah. his Wikipedia. He was in Spencer, it for the company. That means he was it's in true. it for, for winning control of the company. No, no, no. He was in it to make sure his, those people had jobs. He's a man of the people. He's a blue collar guy. He's he's in there. He's he's not he's not a president up there in his, his big he old was a, he's, a, he's, a, he's nepotism. You you're asking for Eric Trump to defend you in court. You're getting this guy who's <laughs> oh, just handed you, everything sir. in his life. And yes, he got it together at the very last possible second. That's when it counts. <laughs> Haven't you ever seen a movie about lawyers? That's it when it counts. Nice. Preparation and research. That is 100% when it counts. If you want to talk about the imperfect ending, can we talk about how he actually managed to close the big deal and save this company? Was he, he like revealing an incestuous relationship or he something? He staged a fake terrorist incident at a bank. He's going to be on <laughs> trial. He's not going to be defending you. And I don't want my lawyer to go up for his closing arguments to turn to the jury and go, let me tell you why I suck as a lawyer. He's going to be All high on nitrous. Thrown in jail. Talking about how funny it. the word is, road is. He is so relatable that jury's going to be be like, I get this guy. Unlike, look, is Obi Wan even going to finish the trial, or is he going to turn into clothes to teach you a lesson? <laughs> like that, that is a concern for me. I at least want a guy who's going to be there the whole time. He doesn't time. just turn into clothes on a whim, Joe. Oh, I'm sorry, what Obi Wan Kenobi. You were watching. Oh, I'm he sorry. Was... Uh, the judge is like, "Are you representing yourself?" And you're like, "Oh no, the living force is representing me." Like, but, come I mean, on, man. <laughs> Obi Wan. Uh, really, may, maybe I'm sure someone will <laughs> quote me in the expanded universe, or whatever. But on screen, he has a record of failure when it comes to negotiation. His negotiation with the Trade Federation fell apart. His negotiation with his own Padawan fell apart. He had to take the high ground just to get out of there alive. His negotiations were never the problem. It was the fact that he was willing to deal with these people that were the problem. He went to the table. He went to the table with offers. That means that he has experience in these negotiations. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln did it too. He so had a team Tommy. of rivals. He convinced his most bitter enemies to support something that was against their own self-interest. That's what you want. But, and, and no, but we're talking about the movie. He didn't do that. He bullied his cabinet to go. He, James Spader was the one that was out there in the swamps getting people to change their votes. Lincoln was up there going, I'm the president and no, I want you to do it Tommy, now. He moderated no, Tommy no, Lee Jones. No, oh, that's Tommy Lee Jones act against his own 
interest to scale it back so that he would get the thing his past. Voice, his voice is so annoying and in that movie. Oh, uh, okay. Guys, Let let's, me... I want to put it on pause for one second. Uh, real quick, Dan, hold that thought. Okay. Uh, I want to hear from each of you. What crime are you being defended for? What crime did you commit in this fictitious crime? Well, I mean, trial? I guess we all have to agree on the Not same really one. Not relevant to yeah. any of our arguments. Not <laughs> relevant to any this, argument. Uh, no. Uh, unrelated road. Yes. Uh, let's go down this spin. unrelated road for just a moment. Tell us what crime you're being defended for. Uh, well, okay. So I want. Same one. I, uh, yeah. Uh, make it, we had a good head of steam. Huh. Uh, shoplifting. Uh, yeah. Shoplifting. Sure. Shoplifting. All of us. We're all on trial. We're all on trial for shoplifting. Oh, all on trial for yes. shoplifting. Yeah. yeah. Great. Otherwise, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, Dan, space go ahead. Shoplifting. Uh, space shoplifting, yes. Uh, no, uh, here's the thing about Obi-Wan Kenobi. You said that he's more... Uh, uh, he should be a judge and not a lawyer. No, Obi-Wan Kenobi is like the most lawyerly person in the world because I want a guy who will defend me whether I'm guilty or not. He's my lawyer. That's part of the job. That's just, that, Every right. lawyer should do you're that. You're right, that is part of the job. What's going to happen? And the way that Obi-Wan Kenobi does it and the way that he stages a convincing argument is that to him... Everyone is justified in doing something from a certain point of view. That is the most lawyerly thing in the world, from a certain point of view. From a certain point of view, I left your dad on a lava bank to die. However, I'm going to sell it to you as the good thing because from a certain point of view, I'm right. That's what you need in a lawyer. But he takes that, judge. that passivity paralyzes him. Yeah. He can't is he going to keep going back to that what well? He can't act. He, also, he stands back while the Senate takes power. Like he's always just, no, let's hold back. And you can just imagine the other lawyer going after a witness and you're just looking at Obi Wan like, are you going to say object? He's like, no, are you going to say from object? A he's like, point of view. Oh, I don't want to interfere. I wouldn't want to upset the balance of the court. Also, if you're on trial for shoplifting, if you're on trial for shoplifting, that guy has someone else's lightsaber in a trunk in his house. He himself is oh. a thief. Oh, the guy tried to kill him. Time. I think that's All <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yo. What? <laughs> Dan, when time's called, time's called. <laughs> All no right. No closing arguments. No nothing. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, we don't always do closing arguments. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, Lon. Actually, we were going, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, should we make uh, no, no, we can't go 20 minutes. Now. We're going to do a round order. order. We're going right, to do a sure. order. I have like uh, three more pages of Man, we're going to have to have episode <laughs> three of this fight to come back. Hotly contested. Dan will never be content <laughs> at the end of a movie fight. Uh, what a Lon. divisive show this is going to be. Go ahead and uh, give us the facts. Uh, I thought every. Oh, uh, facts to check. There are some. Um, Lincoln, <laughs> the implication that Lincoln was only doing things for historical fame has actually been taken up by a number of prominent historians. Oh. Elizabeth Brown Pryor's Six Encounters with Lincoln does imply that Lincoln was a narcissist, whereas Emory College psychological scientist Scott Lylenfeld, he said that Lincoln was only our 31st most narcissistic but president. So there's a lot of argument right. even today. Even in the movie, his wife, well, we, we're done arguing. We're done arguing. But that's <laughs> fascinating. Uh, we, we stumbled into something that actually has a lot to unpack. Uh, Tommy Boy did go to college for seven years as an undergrad, just to make it clear. There was not law school included. We're very clear about that. But to add one more thing about Tommy, he is very explicitly worried in the film about the employees losing their jobs. He brings that up very often. Uh, that was all the facts I heard. There was one thing that didn't get mentioned. I was very curious to hear what the answer would be. Is Obi-Wan going to use the Jedi mind trick that was on the journey? Next, uh, <laughs> that was in the closing. I had Lincoln stuff. I had Obi-Wan stuff. Only that would have been, been my closing argument. That would have been my closing argument. Yeah, I mean, the, it went over 10 minutes. Argument went over 10 minutes. So. Uh, just a thing yeah. that was lingering out there that I was curious about. That's all. Gotcha. That's all. I had, a, I, I had it. Ah. Well, um, that being said, uh, Spencer, your uh, Obi-Wan sounded a little too much like Paul McCartney for my tastes. Mm. <laughs> um, Joe, uh, <laughs> impressions. <laughs> I, I really liked where you're uh, coming from with like Tommy Boy winning everybody over, but I thought there were some great takedowns on you as, as far as uh, uh, him like staging a terror, like a, a terrorist threat, and uh, Which borrowing worked. from his father, and uh, yeah, might not be the most reliable lawyer. Um, and uh, Dan, I thought there were some good takedowns as far as the uh, Obi-Wan's record of failure as a negotiator. I thought, I thought that the least amount of takedowns came against Spencer, and he parried uh, nicely. And for that, I go Abraham I Lincoln. My to you. Open, whatever. Uh, <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody's so high on Lincoln all the time. You know? uh, I'm very uh, down on Lincoln. Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. I had um, petty fogging Tammany all hucksters to throw at you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I, man. Really, I really want to hear a Tammany Hall-themed closing uh, argument. Lon. Yeah. I, uh, 
I went a little differently. I agree. Yeah. I thought Joe made a lot of good arguments, but there were a lot of takedowns that sort of went unanswered. So for me, it ended up being between Spencer and Dan. But I, I have to differ with you, Hal. I thought yeah. Dan's response about, from a certain point of view, that is extraordinarily lawyerly language. I found that to be a very convincing. Obi-Wan could sort of put himself in a mindset to think whoever he was defending deserves to get off. That's very important. So I'm going with Dan. All right, one 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 one. Danielle Radford. Let's go to the internet to decide. All right, let's go to the internet. Um, so we have got Abe Lincoln at fifty two percent, Obi Wan specifically New Hope at thirty four percent, and Tommy Callahan at twelve percent. Oh, oh, once the internet didn't let me down. Um, uh, as a as a former paralegal, this was a very weird round for me. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions. Yeah. About uh, the law. Yeah. Um, any opinions from you or from people watching? Any lawyers that Everyone they real cranky, none of y'all picked Atticus Finch. Oh, he yeah. lost his biggest case. It's yeah, too yeah. big of a counter argument <laughs> to ever yeah. bring to yeah. this table. Yes. <laughs> it's a moral it's, victory. It's a moral, <laughs> it's a moral <laughs> blow. Yeah. You yeah. can't, as a movie fighter. I would have gone uh, yeah. Joe Loser. Pesci. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. There were yeah. a lot of people who were going with um, Vinny Gambini, uh, yeah. Joe Pesci, yeah. Yeah. Um, Fred Gailey from I'm Miracle on 34th chair. Street got a couple. <laughs> Tom Cruise um, from A Few Good Men. I didn't see any Tom Cruise from A good, good, Few Good Men. I think mostly because it's like, I don't know, dude like yelled out his guilt. I don't know if that was Tom Cruise's <laughs> but fault. only because Tom Cruise talked yeah, Tom Cruise baited him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, what I will say is I, there's one on Twitter, uh, at Gunner921 said, Johnny from the room, perfect defense. Ooh. He did not do it. He did it's not. not true. <laughs> Prosecutor, you're tearing him apart. Oh, hi, Judge. <laughs> awesome. Danielle, thank you for that. Also, uh, please chime in with what you think uh, Joe, uh, Joe, Spencer, and Dan each shoplifted. Let Danielle know. <laughs> I want to know what you think each of them shoplifted. Break let's, pads. <laughs> let's go to question number two. It is thank one thank you for oh, Spencer. <laughs> Ooh, spooky question. Who's Ooh. the scariest movie ghost? <laughs> oh, God. I mean, if you're going to give, it's going to get spooky. I mean, you got to let me know when you get some spooky like that. Uh, well, who is the scariest movie ghost? And we will start with player number two, Joe Star. I went with the, uh, the specific poltergeist that is uh, controlling that clown in the movie Poltergeist. Uh, I just think there's something really inherently <laughs> from the 2015 remake wow. of Poltergeist. <laughs> is there a real modernist today? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, JTE is getting a lot of flack. He is yelling back from the booth. He did not pull the. the so I did not. Yes, You're an easy target. <laughs> I'm just saying, the whole controversy is because I won. You guys put me in the sinking chair. You gave me the wrong clownsmanship. <laughs> I'm literally sinking. Um, <laughs> Poltergeist clowns, something inherently scary about both dolls and clowns. It is a Venn diagram of the two. Uh, there's just something weird and uncanny valley and very off-putting about them. Uh, something that I find more scary in, in a horror movie is less is more. Don't show me as much as the monster. Don't do so much. And the f just there's something very scary about your imagination making choices for you. It makes the worst, scariest possible choices for you. And that's what the clown does. Kid throws a thing at the clown, your brain decides, that how that clown is getting angrier and angrier instead of the screen showing it to you. And that's scarier than anything the screen can show. So, clown. All right, the poltergeist clown. Dan. Oh my God. I went with a ghost that has that scared me. The trailers to this movie scared me. I'm not, I'm not good with ghosts. And that is uh, Kayako, the, the vengeful spirit from The Grudge, both the original and the American uh, mm. series of films. Um, I think what's scary about ghosts, is, for me the most, is that they can be anywhere. Like there's no, you can't stop them, you can't keep them out, they're anywhere. And I think that the way that they, Takashi Shimizu did this particular ghost is how they stage it, where she can be, she can be, you know, like the, the one that I always go back to is in bed and she's like under the covers, like staring at you or you're in the shower. It, it taps so primally into these everyday situations and she will just appear. And that for me is scary. It's not so much, oh, I look scary and I jumped out at you. It's this idea of an evil spirit permeating your everyday life. That's what kept me awake at night, just from the images that they used to sell this movie, uh, not, not to mention the images in the movies themselves. And that's what puts the grudge on my list. Dan, knock it off. It's your opening argument. You're already spooking me out. <laughs> uh, so spooky. All this right. is very spooky. Spencer. 
Well, um, I believe it was Brad Ehrlich that famously argued the ghost he'd most like to be haunted by was the blowjob ghost in Ghostbusters. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm arguing a different tact. The scariest ghost in film, and I actually, this really did affect me, is the BJ Bear in The Shining. <laughs> the BJ Bear. Oh, you uh, used the right one. Oh, yeah. Good. It, uh, only one Shining so far uh, appears at the end of The Shining, uh, uh, filleting a, a ghost of a hotel manager that used to run the place. <laughs> And it comes in the middle of just such a escalating series of f of weirdness and and uh, off-putting imagery that this just puts it all the way over the edge for me. It's so unexpected. It's such a shocking image. It's so disturbing. And then if you want to really go down the Kubrick details and theories and stuff like that, the, it, it's scary without knowing anything about it. And the more you learn about it, the scarier it gets. All right, three scary ghosts. Fight it out, you guys. I mean, your your pick is basically what ten seconds of screen time, and I've never really thought it was necessarily scary it's certainly weird it's odd it's bizarre uh i think that the room 237 ghost is is scary i think the little girls in the hallway are scary i think this is just a very kind of bizarre image i wouldn't call it the, the, the scary it's certainly not the scariest ghost i think he's more the, movie. if this was the most put upon ghost i think bj bear would win because he's just trying to give a guy a bj and then this lady just runs in screaming and he's like Right. They're not, not much. Even, they're not even aggressive. They're like, a little privacy, please. Uh, yeah. Coitus uh, interruptus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Hal. Um, uh, <laughs> they seem I seem a little less perturbed than perhaps even a, a non-ghost would be uh, in, in that situation. Well, okay. Just to briefly gloss over the backstory, in the book, <clears throat> it's a sex slave situation, so it's not We're back in book consensual fights. situation. But the Stanley Kubrick made an interesting choice. He changed it from a dog to a bear. Now, why did he do that? Where does the other bear imagery appear? On Dan Danny's pillow while he's sleeping and above Danny's bed on the bear, implying that Danny was not only physically but sexually abused as a kid. So this is a really creepy detail to add to this. Uh, That's sad. Okay. Well, you can go... That's sad as ghost. <laughs> Why don't you go make a documentary about that, Spencer, and we'll watch they it on did. Netflix. It's uh, but, but is it a bear? I think it's still a dog. It's Lon, try to look at that. It may look like a bear. I think it might still be a dog. Whatever. Either way. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I think that uh, thinking that a ghost is going to uh, stand over my bed at a 90 degree angle above me when I sleep is a little scarier than possible subtext and uh, a reading <laughs> of a novel that wasn't written, contained in the movie itself. So uh, weird imagery. Let me get to the poltergeist clown because again, it's like the imagination. I, what's left? What's left of the imagination with the poltergeist clown? It's a clown mm -hmm. and it pops out. And the fight. But it. that's that's the end of that's the end of its haunt. The beginning of that is just all tension, all tension, building tension, building tension until boom. It's the you time, have the inevitable. It's the time before the clown. The clown's scarier when it's inanimate than when it's moving around. Because sure. if you follow that clown through to the end of its lifespan, it gets killed by a tiny boy. But a I tiny would, boy beats the clown to death. Sure, so but how I scary would say, could it really be? But I but I would say uh, that versus uh, the grudge. This ghost is a one and done. It's scary. Boom! It doesn't go back to the well for a series of diminishing I returns. Agree with the, same, with, ring. Uh, same with The Shining. Um, uh, the, I see what you did. It's a it's a one and done thing. Although Pennywise from It certainly takes the scary clown thing to a, a more creepy level. But two clowns in Pee Wee's Big Adventure scary. The problem with The Grudge is diminishing returns. Now you're not a big <clears throat> horror guy, neither am I. But even I've seen more than one Grudge movie, and there are, check my notes, eleven of them. There are so many grudge movies, and they have the same Kayako scares of her with the broken neck crawling around the thing over and over again that she's the impact is lost. Not, yeah, it's a great trailer, well, the but after is lost, yeah. then why are they still making the movies? Because she wasn't the, still scaring Why are they still making they Transformers? Transformers? Why are they still making paranormal activities? They're like, not there's diminishing I was, I was curious scary. if you were going to go with the American remake or the original. Uh, uh, and he said across kind of, all kind of, of them. Both. He said across uh, all of them. The American, the big climactic scary moment with her coming down the stairs, there were shots of it that just looked like they have a mannequin on its stomach and a PA is pushing it like from right off camera. Well, it's, don't even they're, they're, it, forget the American remake. Uh, she ended up fighting the ghost from the ring in like a Freddy versus Jason movie. Actually, brought a uh, clip. JT, you want to run that clip? God damn it, you brought clip. <laughs> no, I don't care. Go ahead. There she is. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, uh -oh. oh look, duck. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. where she ended up. That's how care. scary you, it, it, it was scary initially, and now it's become like Sharktopus. It was scary initially. Thank you. And that's my point. If you want to say they ran it into the ground, you can say they ran it into the ground. That's fine. That's an argument that you can make. They that did. doesn't take away from the fact that the ghost is scary. And it, I don't go like, oh, they used her in eight other movies. I'm retroactively not scared anymore. The fact that the way that she was introduced and the way that she's still employed in some of the films, you want to say they ran into the ground, you can say that. The fact that they are able to employ that ghost 
and such a scary thing. And again, it's not the thing of I'm in a haunted house. I'm in, you know, there's this weird guy or whatever. There's there's this there's this stuffed animal. It's the idea of this this everyday life being intruded upon by the spirit you can't kill it you think you can kill it it's a curse it follows you you can't escape but from it that's every like ghost, that's every haunted house that's yeah. every ghost story a, is like it's a thing. grudge holding spirit from the, beyond the like, execution of it is, is is not scary and that that's what frustrates me about the gr great concept but like the noise isn't scary it's just irritating just maybe not the noise is scary uh, i think it's a scary noise uh, i'm sorry that, i'm sorry that Your internet. <laughs> Joe was making that noise, noise for that I, one. I, I, Did everybody just piss their pants? I, I, is that the, the scariest thing? Scary. Joe's third rate impression of the of the ghost is his uh, argument. Because on. again, they keep every time uh, they can't. They're not. They keep saying my like, ghost is not scary. I'm telling you why both of yours aren't that scary. And you keep saying like, well, they ran into the ground. Well, it's not scary anymore. Well, the ghost isn't scary to me. The fact of the matter is that it is employed the best. Cinematically, it's the scariest ghost, and it's the way that it's used. No, no it's, I really it's just, not. You said it's not. The it's more just, you see it, the worse the effects get. The more boring the effects get. That's why I, I like disagree. the Poltergeist clown because your imagination does the work for you. That's scarier than anyone who's but doing it. Does, it's not it's scary. Scary. Once it comes to life, it's not scary anymore. It's got this big Muppet tendril like flopping around, and then the, a kid rips it to pieces. Yeah, if you want to talk to about bad effects, I'm sorry. The, 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 you want to you revisit the effects in the original Poltergeist on that clown and tell me that that's not cheesily done? I will get just I about will, a minute left. I will, minute take left those, everybody. I will take those cheesy practical effects over bad CGI grudge. It's just It just doesn't look good. It doesn't but look scary. But, but I'm not and saying a little, it's a bad CGI. A little boy might scary. have fought the clown, but at least at least that haunting came to a conclusion. That's that spoopiness came to a conclusion. <laughs> Yours was just a guy that was like, "Dude, I've got a dick in my mouth. Can you go away so I can well, finish this up?" Uh, there's uh, there's uh, different uh, levels to frightening. There's the I, th I think the Grudge and this one both fall into. Why the are you so scared of dog guys with dicks in their mouth, Spencer? Yours is a bizarre because they're non-consensual and they're based on dead, messed up things. Based that on some now you want to in the movie though, Spencer. This is a book fight. The signs are there, Dan. Right. The signs were all there. <laughs> Time. All right. Let's go to Lon Harris with the fact check. And Lon, why don't you chime in with your opinion sure. on this? Uh, not a lot of facts to check. It was a bit, you know, pretty subjective round about what, what people find scary. Uh, I have to say, as much as I love The Shining, oh, there is, there is a lot of... Uh, disagreement online about whether that is a bear or a dog. <laughs> I looked it up. There's there's no definitive. Kubrick did not say. It, it in looks a lot like uh, John Candy's barf from Space It does Spaceballs. look a bit like barf. I always thought it was a bear, but a lot of people, it has bear ears, but a lot of people are making the <laughs> case. Thanks for the visual aid, Dan. <laughs> that could be a dog, so I don't know. The fact yeah, check no, is, I don't mess. know. Uh, <laughs> having said all that, I, I, I really have to say, I think. You see I that think, thing coming towards your groin. I, I don't care I who think, you are. I think Spencer made a case for. What is the most unsettling imagery of a ghost, or what ghost has the best sort of backstory? But I don't think he really sold me on the scariness. So it was between uh, Joe and Dan. I thought they both made a lot of good points. I personally like the practical effects in Poltergeist. I still think it looks fun. But I feel like Dan really made a solid case for how the grudge uses a ghost and why it's so scary to see it in everyday situations. I thought that was a really good point. So I go Dan. All right, that's uh, one for Dan. Yeah. Uh... Spencer, I, I I love how you uh, took us down that road of how all the math of ending <laughs> up at that character works, and now I want to go back and watch that and uh, piece together that puzzle myself. That being said, it was a weird, jarring moment, but yeah, it wasn't quite the scariest. Well, it scared me, Hal. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me give you a come here. Thanks, buddy. Um, but it came down to uh, Joe and Dan for me as well, and um, I just heard more from Dan. I don't think you sold us on the uh, piece by piece, and Dan's opening. Uh, Salvo was super strong, and then I think uh, he parried all of uh, everything that was lodged good against argument. him. Yeah, that is sad uh, to listen yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, like he painted that picture of this ghost that you could not get away from. I also got to go, Dan. So Dan gets the point. Danielle, what do people say? All right, weighing in. Um, no one knows if it's a bear or a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure when we started this round that it was a bear. I feel like I've learned something today. I've learned a lot about it. Yeah, it's got a, that weird I've snout face. I've learned so much. Yeah. Yeah. Today's the day I became a woman. Uh, <laughs> so with 63%, we've got um, Kayako from The Grudge. Sorry if I butchered that. 23%, um, we've got the Poltergeist Clown. And at 12%, coming in hot, is BJ Bear. BJ <laughs> <laughs> and the Not Bear. Not BJ and the Bear. <laughs> totally <laughs> different. And Votes for large Marge. Um, oh. That was my second choice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As, yes. Yeah. As a Solid. kid, yep. as a kid, I was like, no. 
terrifying. Yeah, it was yeah. very scary. A lot of people said Patrick Swayze and Ghost is kind of creepy. <laughs> oh, it's like, yo, let that woman move on. Yeah. Frightening oh, and beautiful. Oh, it's frightening. emotionally frightening. Um, yeah. For the same wow. reason, they also said Casper. That's we a dead child. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, at Holmesy underscore 83 said, I'd be scared if Ghost Dog was coming after me. Oh, me too. Oh, Forrest Whitaker? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Who's yeah. following the way of the Bushido? He's only going after you if you deserve it. Damn, that's a new spin on Ghost, though. Patrick <laughs> yeah. Swayze, leave Demi Moore the hell alone, dude. And also, um, so far for shoplifting, everyone has agreed that it's just Dan taking a lot of flannel shirts and hats. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, the, the great flannel shirt caper. Yeah. And then someone came in and said he only wears FSU hats and they give them away for free. So oh, the internet also oh, has your back. Who gives what away for free? FSU hats? Apparently. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Not to me. <laughs> um, FSU, if you're watching, send them some hats. Yeah. Some hats. Yeah, All hats. right. It is uh, one for Dan, one for Spencer, and we are heading into the third round. This is uh, in inspired by the uh, Wreck It Ralph 2 trailer. Mm -hmm. um, pitch a movie that's set inside the internet. Pitch a movie that's set inside the internet. Question number three, starting with player number three, Dan Merle. Mm, this was uh, this was tougher than I anticipated, just because it's like, how do you not do? You've done the Emoji Movie and Wreck It Ralph two, and what do you do? And so I was kind of saying, like, what what's something that I think would bring a new dimension to it? And the the concept that I came up with is called Dark Web. Oh. <laughs> and it's directed by David Lynch. So oh, BJ, oh wow! Uh, and stars oh, Tony Collette and Oscar Isaac. And they're uh, two parents who, I mean, it's very Lynchian, so it's kind of hard to describe the plot of it, but the, the the basics of it is that they have this kid who's like an internet troll, and he gets basically absorbed by the internet, and so they have to go kind of in search of him. But as with all David Lynch movies, that's a rough outline for what exactly the movie is. And what it really more is, is I just love how singular David Lynch is. I don't always get what he's doing, but it's such a unique way of looking at things. And I really am just interested in his take on this weird, if there's anything more surreal than David Lynch, it's the internet. And so I want to see his take on this weird world of consumerism and, and entertainment and news and, 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 and commerce all blending together, the dark side of it, the dark humor that's, that's in a lot of it. I just think it would be really interesting and in a way that I don't know how many concepts are left in the technology side that would still be interesting. So I went with something that I would be interested in seeing. All right. Uh, David, Lynch's, David Lynch's Dark Web from Dan. Back around to Spencer. I also thought about something I'd be interested in seeing. Um, you guys remember the Y2K bug? I do. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. You know, everyone thought all the network devices were going to fail and all the planes would fall out of the sky. And it passed, and we all thought it was a, a, a big joke. But mm -hmm. that's because you guys don't know the full story. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's oh, no. you don't know. But you'll find out in Why to Kill, Upload a Prayer, Download a Dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's December 1999. America's top scientists tell an exosuit wearing Al Gore that Y2K <laughs> is going to take down the world and there's nothing they can do about it. Out of options, he assembles a crack team of celebrity cyber commandos to hack the internet itself and set off an e-bomb that changes the digits from two to four. <laughs> Enter a digitally de-aged James Vanderbeek, Tom Green, and Drew Barrymore. The Root Squad. Celebrities by day. Navy SEAL hackers with training in ninjutsu by night. And they're going to fight their way to the central clock of the 90s web by any means necessary. <laughs> That's my opening pitch okay. for Why to Kill. Wow. <laughs> Man, I can't imagine there's, there's more. Oh, there's more. Very exciting. <laughs> Why to Kill. Upload a prayer. Download, download a, dream. a dream. Got it. Uh, Joe Starr. Well... This is one of those cool situations where we all came in to just blind pitch each other and really surprise each other, and also one of those situations when maybe that wasn't the best idea. Uh, my movie is called Cash. It is directed by David Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I, maybe I could have gotten a heads up on that. I'm going more, uh, 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 you know, this is going to be fun, actually, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm going, yeah, kind of psychological horror thriller, Black Mirror meets The Shining. Uh, uh, so my pitch is a team of software engineers are sent virtually into a social media network in the not-too-distant future. James which Van There's Dizzy. like, mm? <laughs> uh, 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 Michael Stuhlbarg and uh. Naomi Watts and Steve Young and Winston Duke. Uh, what a great <laughs> cast. Um, 
So in the not too distant future, there's just there's just one sort of monolithic uh, social media network. They have to patch a glitch in the system. The network reacts as if they're intruders and traps them in a digital haunted house built around their lifetime of social interactions. So that means anything they've ever done on the internet, whether it's a positive, simple, innocent thing like they played the same song on a loop for a month, or if it's something gross like they trolled the shit out of someone and like you know, drove them to, to move out of their house or something like that. All of that is fair game and coming to life and, and uh, you know, sort of being presented back to them. It's a, it's a haunted house uh, that they've built for themselves and this uh, network has them trapped in it. All right. You know, uh, and I, th just the, the fact that you both uh, chose Lynch doesn't matter. It's the better pitch, the, uh, how you fit Lynch into it, et cetera. So um, each one will be judged by its individual merits. Fight it out, everybody. Look, You're entering the internet is a stupid idea. So <laughs> it, it's it's always going to be this kind of, the same thing that happens with Tron, the same thing that happens with like Lawnmower Man, where you're just throwing out techno garbage. Let's do a tongue-in-cheek, self-aware version of that, where like you're d taking everything you love about hackers and everything that's cheesy about these movies and just embracing it and going back to like the fun part of nostalgia that r not the Ready Player One stuff, but the but the time has come for late 90s nostalgia. Pixels. Pi not you're, pixels. No, not pixels. <laughs> pixels. More pixels feel. No, not not at all. <laughs> be, uh, it's not pixels? No, it's not pixels. <laughs> you want to see James Van Beek fight a Neopet? You want, you want to see? Uh, no. Yes. Yes, yes you no, do. No, I don't. <laughs> this feels a little. It starts with a P. It starts with P. It, it, it's uh, pixely. Sounds a little pixely. Uh, <laughs> it's completely the word I was looking for. Completely different tone. This is like. Um, oh yeah, a bunch of washed up '90s stars fighting '90s things. It's like Team America. <laughs> it's like embracing the tropes of the genre and of this era to make like kind of a winking like, isn't this dumb? Wasn't this a more innocent time movie? But Neopets weren't even connected to the internet, Spencer. What? Are they just Are they real? Be inside? <laughs> they're, no, they're just a little medallion thing. You're thinking of Tamagotchi. Step your game up, Joe. No, I wanna. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's what I'm saying. I'm a 90s kid, and I, those references have already been lost on me. So, like, uh, wh what need do I have to go see this film? Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's the best parody movie of 2002. We're just making it 16 years later. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, I don't, I don't have nostalgia for that. And I, that's that should be in my target zone of like, oh, I'd love to see that. And I'm just like, oh, no, no, thank you. That's why. Why, yeah. why do we need to go back to Y2K? So well, yours was about a family that had a, a, a kid that's a troll, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so our, ours are, are, are fairly similar, which... Not really, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, What I like about um, uh, a group of adults being trapped in something like this is that um, you have a, a more of a, a lifetime of experiences than just a kid who's specifically a troll, and so it's going to be less of a revenge thing. You were bad, trolling is bad, and more of just just a, a sort of a, a study of humanity almost, just people's choices, whether they be good or bad, being twisted and turned against them. Uh, and like you, it's a you know, David Lynch is going to give you a lot more than what you're expecting. Is any of this real? What's going on? Uh, it's going to be just a really sort of dark and twisted puzzle box movie that people are going to obsess with, like his other ones. But but I difference... feel like going both this premise of going inside the computer, I know mine sounds stupid and jokey, but anything you do with that premise is going to come off as stupid and jokey. So trying to make a prestige film about about going inside the internet. I think it's just inherently stupid. Stupid. That's well, not true, yeah. though. That's why I am going way more. That's why I picked David Lynch. Yeah, you picked a director in a setting, and they said David Lynch will make it cool. Well, you know, I picked like, David Lynch setting because the question literally said pick, pick a name, a name, director, and a setting, and a cast, it? which I did. Yes. I didn't say that on the thing. Yeah, no, that's when we got the, whatever. I mean, the, the <laughs> job is emails. pitch a movie uh, set in the internet. You're gonna... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, yeah, that's the thing. It's like the job was to pitch a movie set in the internet, and my th yeah. the, the thing that I did was like I didn't. I specifically went with David Lynch and mm -hmm. my premise because you're right. It has a lot of avenue to be cheesy, but I also think, and the reason that I went with my approach is, and where Joe's and I differ is, you've constrained David Lynch too much, and that you're painting him in the black mirror box. And I saw a great episode of Black Mirror that was about replaying your life and everything's recorded and you can play it back and see the, like that kind of story has been done. That's why I went with a very loose construct because the only thing left with this concept is something weird and trippy and out there and it's not so much about the internet itself. Like it's not a premise driven movie in the sense like it's about people going to the internet. It's a David oh, this, Lynch you know who using notoriously hates technology. David Lynch. Exactly. He's that's why does, this oh, is yeah, interesting. But he's hated it for so long he doesn't understand it enough to even comment on it. This is a guy who hates iPhones. He's like, ah, don't watch a movie on your goddamn phone. He's like a Luddite. Like, he's not the person to take on the flaws of the internet. No, he doesn't he's even the know about person. it. He is a Luddite, and he's the perfect person to take on the flaws of the internet because he's coming at it as now, an that's outsider. That's how you get the circle. It's thing. like people who don't get social media can't make fun of social media. You can avoid it, but like, let him just Here's leave it alone. I don't think this, uh, my pitch is limited by David Lynch not, uh, not having a hot 
take uh, understanding of Snapchat, nor is it limited <laughs> by the gimmick of the internet. This is uh, at its core, the setting is, is the internet, but the core is people coming face to face with a lifetime of choices, how those have shaped them. Uh, are they good? Are they bad? How do they deal with them? Uh, look, I, I, I'm still anxiety driven because uh, I thought my uh, wedding reception playlist was bad. Like that'll still come up. So imagine David Lynch taking something as simple and silly as that and just wrapping it around somebody, turning them inside out and making them deal with it. A really good psychological drama. Yes, the internet is the vehicle, but it's not a gimmick. I Imagine the creepy dancing like baby from Ally McBeal eating Drew Barrymore, and then James Vanderbeek makes the crying James Vanderbeek meme face. That sounds like that sounds like <laughs> the robot chicken. Rogers one of those room. <laughs> seltzer, whatever epic movie. That sounds like a sketch that would be in one of those god awful 2002. It's like, oh, what's the dancing baby thinking about that? Shut up, Dawson. Like that was awful ten years ago. How? It, but yours is way better. Yeah. It's okay. gonna be great as an every '90s ever ever video, but uh, uh, about a minute left. About a minute left. But the, see, so that's I think uh, with with an uh, with an ensemble cast, uh, with this being focused on an ensemble of adults, I think that gives you uh, more to play with than just a kid who's a troll. That sounds more like just sort of a straight up like kind of revenge thing. Like this is what you get for but bad behavior but not, online. But that's not what it is. That's not what they did. That's not what the 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 message of the movie is. That is the setup. That's the vehicle to which we get into this movie. And the thing about David Lynch is you talk about an ensemble cast. Like I have a couple good actors, Oscar Isaac and Tony Collette. I picked them because they've done really good work in very experimental films before and I think that they would go well with Lynch because the star of a David Lynch movie is David Lynch and the more that you focus on the cast and the story and the plot mm -hmm. and what these people are going through the less you get away yeah, from what that's I why think I David gave Lynch's him, sensibilities That's why are. I gave him Watts someone who he works with regularly someone who he conduits uh, David Lynch through Naomi Watts that's one of his muses I think that that's a really good casting decision uh, so, yeah, of course he's the star, he's the lead. Uh, this is a cast that knows how to sort of get out of his way and be used to tell the story that he wants to tell. Uh, I think Christopher Nolan could could do sort of what you're talking about, where it's like, <laughs> oh, I don't know, it's a, no, 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 like what you're saying we're doing, sort of, yeah, it's a boring it's internet thing. But the difference in David Lynch doing a project like this is bringing out that raw emotion and terror and just general dis Look, discomfort and uneasy. You both said a lot about feel. how great David Lynch is. You're both just stepping away from the premise itself, and mine just is going, it's a nostalgic throwback to a more nostalgic, better time where it's a little more innocent on the internet and off of it, and it's just a fun adventure movie through a computer. Time! It's a hacky run time. Down, 10 year old references. <laughs> All right, uh, Lon. Uh, well, in terms What's of that facts, one thing I have to say, uh, David Lynch, he, he is a bit of a lead in some ways, but he actually there, loves the like, internet and has been doing a lot of experiments on the internet all along. Here's a quote, it's just sort of starting, but it's a beautiful world, a beautiful modern world and getting better. Mm. So David Lynch, kind of an internet fan, but worth pointing out. Uh, as for the pitches, Spencer, I have to say, had me for a while. But then when we got down to the stretch and it was dancing baby Vanderbeek meme references, <laughs> yeah. it does sound like a scary movie kind of thing, and I, I kind of, you, you kind of lost me on that or one. Or something a psychotic fan would say. Yes. Juan, that scene's cut. Just for you. <laughs> so it did come down to the two Lynches, and I think, uh, you know, like they both sound interesting as a big David Lynch fan. I think I have to, in the end, go with Cash. I really like the idea of a haunted house that is determined by your own past internet activity and search history feels really relevant right now, like a troll being confronted by the horror of their own actions. So I'm going with Joe. Gotcha. Thanks, Lon. Uh, yeah, I got to agree with you on Spencer's. Uh, it, it did sound like, yeah, just I, the tone, like that's a bitter, it's a tough pill to swallow. You got to be, you really got to want to see a bunch of 90s references. <laughs> and at its worst, it could be a little bit epic movie-ish. No one so. wants to see a movie in the internet. <laughs> well, um, that is the question that we're dealing with here. So it also came down to the lynches for me. But I went a little bit different from you, Lon, because uh, I, I like both of these pitches as potential movies, but Dan's sounded more Lynchian to me. Like, Dan's the one that was evocative of what Lynch does best. Like, especially the last couple of Lynch movies I saw, um, Inland Empire and Mulholland Drive, uh, Mulholland Drive, which are real mind effers, um, Dan kind of took me down that road, and I want to give uh, David Lynch the tools to succeed here. Even though that's a compelling movie with great casting choices, Dan seemed just more fully realized to me in, in a Lynchian way. So I gotta go Dan. Uh, we're 1-1. One, one. Let's go uh, to Daniel Radford to wow, decide. Wow, it's the battle of the lynches. Who will lynch harder? Um, so going Crazy. to the poll, um, we have got with 56% Joe's pitch, 
for cash. Um, with 24%, we've got Dan's pitch, and Spencer came in as a very respectable 19%. Mm. My, I have a question. Is, he, is Al Gore playing himself yes. in the film? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I should put that in there. Yeah. I was curious about um, In the so, robot suit. A uh, couple of notes. Everyone is like really into all of your movies from what I'm seeing on the thing. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of questions about whether or not Joe is married, even though I feel like he talks about it a whole bunch. Um, a lot of people like asking for a friend, and it's like, no, it's all right. It's the hair. It raised your thirst. Mm. Um, and his inner character. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, those were some of the, the great ones that I saw. Everyone was, like, super into this round, you guys. Nice. Right. That's a good yeah. one. Nicely done. Joe takes it. That means we've got a three-way tie. Here we are again. <laughs> oh, boy. We yeah, do boy. have a tiebreaker. Oh, boy. Uh, hey. Did so, you want to use the one that we had a, a last-second audible one before uh -oh. the show? Oh, want to use that one? <laughs> oh, I didn't hear it. Do you want to come over and whisper you, you to heard. me? You we were all discussing it. We were all talking about it before the show. Yeah. I don't know if you want to. All right. Wait, it's, wait, we had wait, said... We all, we all were. Well, you, we all were yeah. here when we were talking about oh. the Michael right. Keaton. Mr. As Keaton a and his various oh, yeah, no. uh, <laughs> logical roles. That one. Uh, no. yeah, to too much time to think about it. Too Fair much time up. to think about it. Okay. So, since there are three of you, uh, the, the, the first answer will go first, the second answer will go second, the third uh, person to call it out will go uh, third. And uh, are we giving just a strict 20 seconds or are we going to do a 10 second rebuttal as well? Billy? He says rebuttals. rebuttals. Okay. okay, 20 and 10, 20 and 10. All right, here's the tiebreaker. What Terry Gilliam movie would be most improved if you added the entire Justice League to the cast? <laughs> it's because Brazil. Terry, Terry Gilliam made Brazil, Brazil, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, good. okay, we have Brazil. <laughs> Did he direct Holy Grail? No, Terry Jones. Thank you. Well, I think they co-directed it. I don't know. Hal, you decide if you want to allow that. Did he co-direct it? They co-directed it. Okay, we'll allow it. Holy Grail. I'm trying to do the best one. There's many that I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. All right. But I'll go with 12 Monkeys. All right. Nice. Okay, so uh, Dan, you'll go third. Joe, you'll go second. And Spencer, your time will start whenever you speak. Uh, the Cinematic Justice League, the one we have to this point, which is the one I'm working with, works best in a techno dystopia. These people work uh, uh, the best in a world that's controlled, a world where people are tortured, a world full of darkness and grimness, and they're always just grimacing and they're always paranoid. And that's the perfect setting for the Justice League, for the Justice League that we know and currently deal with. Don't you want to see bat time? <laughs> Joe. I think it's a terrible idea to just do more dark Justice League, but if you put them in something as ridiculous as Monty Python and the Holy Grail, then you can skewer the commercialism of the Justice League, the failed iconography of the Justice League, just the failing attempts at making them a thing. The entire movie is about this ridiculous failed quest. It, it runs so many parallels with the DCU's attempt to make itself a thing. It ends in complete cop-outs. Shots fired at DCU. Dan. Look at 12 Monkeys, look what it's all about. It's about it's about avoiding this horrific future that's ahead of us. What would make the stakes even higher than adding uh, uh, even more Bruce Willis, except now there's uh, Jason Momoa running around saying, yeah, and Dark, dark Knight nightmares and things flying around. Like, oh my God, that's even more terrifying. It ups the stakes even more. And I think that's what you want. You want Terry Gilliam to use that iconography. Those things look like... All right, so uh, now we'll go around and hear your 10 second rebuttals. Spencer, whenever you're ready. So the question was most improved, and Dan, yeah, they fit in that movie, they fit in my movie, but yours is a comedy, and nothing ruins comedy like the Justice League, like the current DCEU. There's not a single joke that works in that entire universe, and to put them in Holy Grail is sacrilege. To put them in Holy Grail is the only direction you can take them now. Put Jason Momoa in front of the knights that say knee and just watch his like cool swagger just shatter in front of this ridiculous scene. They're so over the top, this is where they live. You just completely derailed a classic comedy and threw Jason Momoa in there and ruined that movie, whereas Spencer and I have both incorporated the Justice League into our movies without affecting the overall quality of the film. We've improved them. You've completely derailed the whole Arthur thing. Time, wow. What a weird question. superheroes and superhero movies. Gotcha, so thank that's, you. It's, there is relevance there. All right. Uh, Danielle Radford. So, oh, and let we pick... Pick the one who does not who does yeah, not who does, move on. Who doesn't pick move. the one who does not 
Why are you making me choose between my sweet boys? I know. Look at these sweet game. boys. And, okay, now it's, and now it's no longer uh, the voice of the people. It's just the voice of me. Yes. Being real sad. I love you all. Um, so everyone had really good points. This was a really silly question For with very sure. strong arguments. Um, ah, this is really hard, but I do have to say that I agree with um, as much as I would love to watch all of these characters just get completely taken down in um, in the Holy Grail. I do agree that it winds up derailing the story of it as much as I do want to have that moment of Jason Momoa just coming in all swaggy and drunk and then getting cut down. It does take away from the story completely. Yeah. Um, so I have to say, Joe, I hate everything. Don't make me do this. Yeah, you know what, uh, Danielle, uh, I, I hate to do it because Pull you- Pull the trigger, Danielle. You, you, I only feel you. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I love you. References. Um, all three of Look you demonstrated, flowers, yeah. uh, demonstrated a, a great uh, Terry Gilliam recall, and I thought um, you did fine jobs infusing these characters into potential scenarios, but yeah, I think Dan had uh, just a, a great takedown on you at the end saying that it does derail um, what's an amazing comedy. And uh, yeah, for that reason, I'm sad to do it, but Joe, um, you are not going to the speed Gentlemen, round. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Sir. Mr. Merle. Yes, Mr. Sir. Gilbert, see you after the show. Uh, <laughs> I don't do anything now, right? <laughs> I'm um, just gonna sit there awkwardly. You know like, what? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, just we'll, lower your chair. <laughs> we'll come to you if you got, a, yeah, if you got some thoughts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, just like Gary Oldman in Tiptoes. Just like Gary Oldman oh, in Tiptoes. <laughs> okay, um, Dan and Spencer are locked up in a 1-1 one -one tie. Find ourselves here boy, again. oh boy. Here we go, folks. Speed round like time. And again, time Danielle year. will not be reading the uh, internet's opinion uh, for the poll. Um, she'll be giving her own opinion because there's no time for polls in the speed round. Here is question. Number one. Uh, it's funny. This, uh, this comes from someone who donated to our Women in Film event, Lizzie Heffernan. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, Lindsay asks, which, here we go, which Gary Oldman performance would be most improved by being performed on his knees a la Tiptoes? It's a great. Tiptoes episode, folks. Wait, no, that, I'm sorry, that's in Gary Busey. Wow, that would, that, would, that would have been good too. Uh, 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 Cyrus, is that his name, the pimp in True Romance? Okay, uh, Drexel. Drexel. Yeah. Drexel, the pimp from True Romance. Uh, Commissioner Gordon. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> All right. Uh, Spencer spoke first with Drexel from True Romance, so 20 seconds begins whenever you speak now. Uh, I think it adds to Drexel's character because he's just this collection of quirks, of insane quirks that shouldn't work together, but they do. He's Gary Oldman, a white English guy with dreads who talks in a patois with gold teeth and a weird <laughs> Hawaiian shirt. Why not make him on his knees, too? Just add one more layer of, uh, of oddness, and I'll bet you could do some cool action stuff with a guy on his knees fighting uh, Christian Slater in close quarters with a shotgun. Time. All right, whenever you are ready. You ever heard of putting a hat on a hat, Spencer? That's what you're doing with Gary Oldman and True Romance. He has so many quirks. The last thing he needs is another quirk. You're right. He has so many other things going for him. I want to see Gary Oldman just being towered over by Batman. What symbolizes more the fact that Batman towers over the Gotham Police Department than him literally towering over Police Commissioner James Gordon? No, the hat on a hat on a hat thing isn't a distraction because, like you said, he's already a collection of quirks. That is adding like the weirdness to it, where like you can't even frame the two characters together. You're gonna have to shoot from this wide <laughs> angle just to see them both. He's gonna be at Batman's waist. <laughs> Again, you're, 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 there's a there's a stylistic reason for it. You're impressing Batman's size. Plus, Gary Oldman can do anything. He will still be a great character, and it's just too much. It's like tacky wallpaper on top of green paint. It's too much. Time. All right. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's go to. Uh, <laughs> Both great arguments, um, but I think, uh, I, I ultimately, I think I agree. Drexel already has a ton going on, and I think it would be a really interesting take on those scenes we've seen from so many Batman movies if Batman was legitimately <laughs> towering over poor on his knees, Commissioner Gordon. I'm going with Dan. All right, that's one for Dan. Danielle. Um, I, I... I have to, I have to agree with Log on this one. Um, <laughs> he made a very wow. compelling, <laughs> very compelling argument about how Batman Tower is over. Yeah. God, I'm sorry, I can't. I have to. I have to <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, so, so, so funny. She just can't take it anymore. Uh, I'm just but, imagining like 
I'm sorry, I'm just imagining Batman being like, I am the knight, and Gary Oldman's down here like, okay. Yeah, you, you can have a spin-off. The little commish. Uh, Dan. Dan gets that point. Right. It is 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one in the speed round. Second question of the speed round. Wow. Um, oh, and Joe Sardis over there looking hella adorable. Looking like Commissioner um, Gordon. Like classic Commissioner Gordon. Um, give us a Commissioner Gordon line. I think we can trust him. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number two. Oh, God. Val Kilmer will likely return yeah. for Top Gun 2. Mm. What other role would you want to see him revisit? Ooh. In like a sequel or just like in life? What other role would you want to see <laughs> I like him it's a one revisit? Show. Like, what other Can I pick a movie where he died? Revisit. Yeah, I think a reboot yeah. would uh, be okay. Whatever. I'm Mad Martigan and JT mm. like that in uh, uh, Willow. Ooh, Mad Martigan and Willow. Willow. <clears throat> Going through my Val Kilmer filmography <laughs> in my head. Um, I'm going to go with... Let's keep it on theme. I'm going to go with Batman. All right, we have Batman, we have Mad Martigan. Uh, Spencer, you spoke first. Begin whenever you're feeling it. I'm also keeping it on theme with little people. It's a fantasy movie, it's unique, and Mad Martigan is absolutely the best part of that film. He adds so much uh, 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 verve and so much life and spirit to it. He's the ultimate charming rogue who you can't trust as far as you can throw him. He's, uh, uh, Val Kilmer's perfect for that. He's got a devilish glint in his eye, and I'd love to see him uh, come back to that role, maybe a little wizened uh, a little later, like a Han Solo type. Hi. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go with the Val Kilmer of the past, I want to go with the Val Kilmer of the present. And this is something the Batman series, which is sorely in need of some rejuvenation, has never done. They have never returned to an actor who had the role to return and do something new with it. And I want to see how Val Kilmer, who is a fantastic actor that doesn't get a lot of work or challenges these days, manages to take Batman from what he did into this new current situation. If he was such a fantastic actor, well, I agree he is, but he flubbed Batman. Why would you give him a second chance to return to a world that no one wants to see him return to? He was stiff as a board, and there's no reason why there's any depth if he's the same Batman from the Forever Universe. Hi. <laughs> That's my point, though. He's not. You were taking him back to the character, and he didn't flub Batman. People people say that he did, but he didn't. He actually was one of the more psychologically complex Batman up there with Keaton, way better than Clooney, way better than a lot of other people that have had the role. Time. Who we? <laughs> Uh, this is a very uh, difficult choice here. Um, by the way, no one said the correct answer, Doc Holliday, but uh, that's besides the, the first side Yeah, one. why yeah. I go back? Uh, why improve on perfection? I'd say uh, top secret. Um, <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Uh, He's hilarious. Kiss, kiss, uh, da uh, you know what? Uh, Spencer uh, had um, a takedown of Dan that Dan uh, navigated, but Dan didn't uh, really have any takedowns. Uh, of, of, Mad uh, for Mad Mar Mardigan that really resonated for me, so I gotta go Spencer on this one. Uh, let's go to Lon. Oh, uh, yeah, I uh, I agree, it was, it, was, it was pretty close, but yeah, I thought, uh, I didn't hear any real solid arguments about why uh, sort of revisiting Mad Mardigan, Willow 2 wouldn't work. Uh, I feel like it kinda would, so I'm going with Spencer as well. All right, Spencer gets the point. We are locked up at 2-2. Two, two. Wow. Our non-biased engineer is very <laughs> All right, question number three of the speed round. The new Halloween trailer drops tomorrow. Besides the original Halloween, what's the best ever movie featuring Jamie Lee Curtis? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Lies? Oh, okay, true, true lies. lies. Uh, oh, wow. She's been so much. She's been a lot. Wow. She's been in a lot of good movies. Wow. 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 Uh, I'm going to go with uh, uh, Trading Places. Trading Places. Excellent choice. All right. Isn't she in Freaky Friday, too? She was? She's in the remake. Yep. <laughs> true Lies versus Trading Places. Spencer spoke first. Spencer, 20 seconds to begin. Whatever you speak now. Tom Arnold was robbed for a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for the movie <laughs> True Lies. Uh, this is uh, this movie what combines action and combines comedy. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is excellent in it. This is, this movie is like The Incredibles, but with spies. It's a perfect fa broken family drama that's healed, and they and they heal that way through exciting action, through peak Schwarzenegger, through Bayham but contained uh, Jerry Bruckheimer ham. Uh, it, it's got really everything you want from an entertaining Hi. movie. Uh, 
True Lies is a product of its time. It has not aged well, particularly in regards to Jamie Lee Curtis. I think that Trading Places was the hackiest premise in the world that captured one of the great comedy uh, names in America at the peak at his prime with Eddie Murphy. You have Dan Aykroyd. Again, it's about material and it's about a memorable comedy. This is one that could have been lost to the ages, but because it has such... It comes down to rewatchability for me. I'd watch True Lies anytime it's on cable, and I do think it holds up as a piece of entertainment, whereas yours is a historical important movie that, uh, you know, the jokes work the first time. I don't really need to go back and see Eddie Murphy do his thing for the hundredth time. time. I don't think it has historical importance. I think it's just, it's a classic comedy. It has stood the test of time. I think True Lies is dated. It's an era of the big macho action 90s. Classic comedies are timeless. I don't think True Lies is timeless. Trading Places is timeless. Time, woo wee. I like both of these movies a whole lot. Uh, but uh, it came down to the arguments and uh, uh, Dan had several good takedowns and a good argument of, uh, for, his, for his own. I don't think Spencer had a takedown of his own right there. He had a good argument for True Lies, but I think Dan clearly took the point for me. Danielle. I, um, yeah, these are both really good points, but I do think that Dan's, um, his argument about how dated True Lies is now, mm -hmm. oh, it's really hard, because this one is one of those ones where it's like choosing my babies. Um, but yeah, I have to I have to agree, I have to go with Dan. Yeah, no one brought up, uh, like, you know, Dan Aykroyd has blackface in Trading Place, <laughs> in trading place but uh, no one brought it up, so. Uh, no one brought it up. Yeah, but it's a uh, no Trading Place. No bad guys in True Lies, the, the Crimson. Crimson <laughs> yeah. 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 Neither one of them are Paragons. <laughs> Listen, nothing ages well! Nothing ages well! Okay, sorry. Speed <laughs> All right. You um, go with what pops in your head. Indeed, indeed, Dan. Uh, Dan takes the lead three to two. Uh, this is game, set, and match point if Dan takes this. Um, Spencer needs it to keep it going. All right, question number four of the speed round. Uh, we got our first real look at Enter the Spider-Verse this week. What movie superhero that doesn't have one deserves their own animated verse? Verse. Universe. Oh, wow. You know, like yeah. the enter the whatever verse. Yeah. <laughs> what superhero deserves their own animated, animated universe? Verse. Hmm. The Blade Averse. Blade. <laughs> I'd, I'd enter the Blade Averse. Blade Averse. Ooh, interesting. I, is this a, uh, sorry, is this a universe that's populated like Spider-Man with versions of them, or is, are we sure. free to? I think, I think, yeah, it's like versions, a, it's, it's does like it have a, to be? Does it have to be multi -blades? No, if you can I'll, come up with no. a okay. verse that is not, whatever your verse is, <laughs> okay. is Yeah, fine. Like it could be their cast of characters, their cohorts, Tell their rogues gallery. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that, yep. I just want to make sure that we're I think we're pretty open, pretty open Yeah, I think we're pretty verse. loose to the, uh, to the verse. <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, to the, yeah, to the yeah. Uh, parameters okay. of the verse. Uh, then, uh, I am going to go with, uh, the Hulkaverse. Ooh, okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh this is fun. Ooh. Okay, uh, so uh, Spencer with Blade, Dan with Hulk. Spence, uh, 20 seconds begins whenever you speak. Blade's an R-rated movie. I want to do a hard R animated feature. No kids are going to accidentally wander onto this one. This is going to be anime <laughs> style, like Ninja Scroll. This is going to be ultra violent, uh, like an old school hand-drawn 90s uh, anime feature. You're going to have Wesley Snipes voicing, because we don't know if he can still do the moves, but he can definitely still do the voice. He can still move uh, like crazy in animation. And we, they created this whole Blade cast of characters time, that they never really used. Time. Uh, the, the worst part was when they expanded the Blade cast of characters in Blade Trinity. That movie lasted, that franchise lasted three movies and ran out of gas. Plus, it's nothing new about Blade. The interesting thing about the Incredible Hulk that's been constrained with the cinematic universe is there are so many different versions of that character. The Grey Hulk, the smart one, the dumb ones. There's a way to interact all of them together. You can bring in She-Hulk, you can bring in more of the supporting cast like Betty Ross that have been completely put away by the movies. Look, I would rather see that live action. We're not getting another Blade movie. We can do, we can live on this franchise and expand the universe by pivoting to animation, whereas the Hulk is in, gonna be in seven movies a year, and... Uh, the Hulk doesn't work very well in live action. That's why they've struggled to make a universe around him. This is the opportunity to make something of the Incredible Hulk and actually put him in a thing that, in a context that makes sense and in a format that makes sense. We've seen Blade. Time. Woo wee. All right. Let's Ooh. go to Lons Harris. Uh, I like both of these. I would totally enter b either of these verses myself. Yeah. But ultimately, I, I really Deep like Dan's verse. argument about there are there is already this great cast of alternate Hulks: Gray Hulk, She Hulk. We never get to see these Hulks. It would be fun to have an animated universe where we could see a bunch of different Hulks, so I'm going with Dan. It's funny because right, I don't argue that. <laughs> so many Hulks! There's so, so many Hulks! Hulks. So Red, many Hulks. gray! Uh, uh, Alright, that's uh, one over for Dan. Let's go to Daniel Radford. 
Um, I I have to agree with Dan, but not for, although as much as I do want to see all of those, and I really want to see that She-Hulk um, procedural drama, I, <laughs> I also, Dan had for me that, that cutting line about how as soon as the Blade universe expanded, it ended the movies. <laughs> yep. Um, so that was what did that for me, so I gotta go with Dan. Dan Merle, guess what? You took the oh, day! Uh, Dan Merle! Yeah! Wow! This grudge match, and it came to, what a, uh, what, what a crazy turn of events, but Dan, you uh, took it in the speed round nicely. Done. I uh, never thought that little person Gary Commissioner Oldman. Short, Commissioner Short, <laughs> would be, uh, there you go. Yeah, um, Dan, go ahead and, uh, go, any, anything exciting uh, coming up? Anything, uh, any messages, shout outs, etc. cetera? Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for everybody that uh, watched this the first time and are, we're still doing speed round questions from our fundraiser. And, yeah. um, and, I, and if you would, actually, um, we did a, a video this morning on Screen Junkies News kind of about the state of online interaction and, and fans and uh, I, I, it was a conversation that I really loved. Uh, uh, Roth Cornette and Danielle um, and uh, Rocky Stryer were there, and I think it was a really, really great discussion. And uh, if you have uh, about a half hour or so, um, check it out. Yeah, I highly really recommend. You, do, you you guys delved into like the Kelly Marie Tran uh, issue yeah. and everything going around things, with Star you know, Wars and, and the internet. Yeah. yeah. Um, a thoughtful SJU this morning. Check it out. Dan, congrats on Thank a you, well sir. fought victory, brother. Cucumber, uh, I'm coming for you. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Guess what? Um, Thank you for that reminder. Uh, breaking news, y'all. Uh, Dan, you are qualified in a a uh, winner faces cucumber match. So it's uh, going to be you, uh, Ed Greer, and mm -hmm. Koijandro, if I'm uh, not mistaken. That, yes, I'm yes. thumbs up on uh, it. Uh, Dan Ooh. versus Ed Greer versus Koijandro. Wow, what wow. A battle. What three a powerful fight. competitors will square off against our puppet champion. Our felted friend. Our felted well, friend. I have nothing respect for our felted friend, Please. Cucumber, but felted friend. Cucumber. these guys are our puppet champions. He has yes. my belt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cucumber has the belt. Um, Spence, uh, uh, well fought, funny Thanks, stuff. Al. Go ahead and uh, chime in with some, uh, yeah, give us a shout out, give us a, 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 a weird non sequitur, anything you want. Uh, Hal, I saw that Mark Wahlberg just came out with some Air Jordans and I thought about you. you oh, get a pair? oh. Uh, Wahlberg Wait, loves Wal Jordans. Wahlberger's customs. Like, he gets like uh, custom Jordans from uh, like weird, like, because he's from, he's a Boston guy, we all know that, so he gets like weird green special Jordans and stuff. Well, so. if you let me win next time, I uh, got a pair in it for you. Damn it! Okay, <laughs> noted, noted. Um, thank you. I'm gonna look those up. Check it out. Thanks for the Wall tip. <laughs> the Wahlburgers. Have you eaten? Has anyone here eaten at Wahlburgers? No. I'd no. love to. But yeah, I, I kind of want to. What? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, sir. Super funny and well fought as always. Joe Star. Oh man, your, your chair may be lowered, but you are higher in my esteem. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, uh, give us a yeah. Talk hey man, I, I really like doing this with these guys. Uh, best part about this show was yesterday us just having a very long conversation as to what and what did not define a ghost. <laughs> 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 so, we did have a very serious conversation. I guess which, uh, the Babadook's not a ghost! Which was <laughs> the most fun. And, uh, uh, uh yes, am, am married. Fan question. Uh, nine years yesterday. Happy anniversary. Woo! Woo! That's awesome. Yes, uh, uh Joe um, has a lovely wife, and congratulations on your anniversary, oh, sir. thank you. Yeah. Um, Lon Harris, thank you for holding it down over yeah. there. Uh, I've been handed an urgent bulletin. Yes. Yes. We gave out the wrong link for Squarespace. Shut it down. Delete it from your bookmarks. It should be squarespace.com slash screen junkies. Oh, squarespace.com slash screen junkies. Can just hand me these pieces <laughs> of paper? I don't know. Don't blame me. Thank you for that clarification, and I'll meet up with you later. We'll log in on that link and make our owl site. We got, yeah, owls.org. <laughs> I bet .com is taken, so we'll go owls.org. Um, who's going to... Uh, dot who? who? Who is going to check it out? Uh, <laughs> Daniel Radford, thanks for being I'm awesome, out. as oh, always. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This, uh, Thank you for having me. I'm here every week. What am I talking about? What happened? Um, this was really fun. Uh, as you per usual, follow me on the Twitters and the IG at Danielle underscore Radford. Um, this was an amazing fight. I'm really excited, and I love you all. And I, I'm sorry, I love you, Joe. It's cool. Aww. It's cool. Bullet Club is fine. So sweet. Bullet Club is fine. <laughs> Bullet Club is fine. Yeah, those guys are too sweet right after the show. Uh, you guys, I want to thank you for watching. So much fun uh, with the OG Screen Junkies right here. Uh, we'll see you next week on Movie Fights. Bye-bye.